This is the tenth show of the series of the brand new radio series. From Hollywood, we present the Stan Freebird Show. With the music of Billy May. With Dawes Butler, June Murray, Peter Lee, and the Judge Conlon with the Bears. You may not find us on your TV, because in case you did not know, we're being brought to you on. Brought to you on. Brought to you on R-A-D-I. Good evening. Tonight, of course, all of us have just returned from a triumphant six-day layoff. <laughs> and, uh, and it's great to be back. Before we went on the air tonight, we asked the studio audience what their pet gripe was, and we were amazed to find their complaints were virtually unanimous. Now let's meet a couple of people from the audience. Can I have your name here, sir? Yeah. My name is George Hannigan. Uh-huh. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hannigan? I'm a truck driver. And that's why I said I'd love to get my hands on the guy who designed freeways. Good. All right. Mr. Hannigan, fine. Now, we have a lady driver here. May we have your name? Uh, yeah, Mrs. Edwin Hurst. Hurst? Uh, any relation to Randolph? You mean the reindeer? <laughs> no, no, never mind. Now, uh... What was your, uh... What was your grouse again? Oh, I hate freeways. Splendid. Now, we also have two other people from the audience to make up our little discussion panel. And now the surprise. I'd like you all to meet Mr. Henry Cloverleaf, the inventor of the American freeway system. Mr. Cloverleaf! What in the world? Panel, look what you've done. You've rendered our guest, Mr. Cloverleaf, unconscious. What a terrible thing. Fighting inside the studio. Okay, we'll take him outside. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> uh, market research shows that the do-it-yourself craze is fading a bit because, well, people are afraid they really can't do it themselves as advertised. To put these skeptics straight, June Foray and I will assemble before your very ears... The Freebird Build It Yourself Knock Down Grand Piano. Now, to show you how quickly and simply it can be done, our producer is going to time us. Are you ready in there? Okay. You ready, June? Oh, sure, Stan. I'm ready. Ready to show our listeners how truly super simple the piano can be assembled. Just answer yes or no, please. Yeah. Now, you read the instructions, and I'll put this little beauty together. Okay. All right. All right. First, you take the parts out of the box. All right. That makes sense. <laughs> Okie doke. Everything's out. Now what? Now you fasten legs A to body B. All righty. Here we go. All right. All right. Okay, that's three of them. Legs A are on body B. What's next? Next, you take the long strip of ivory-covered wood C and saw it into 88 little hunks. Check. <laughs> Okay, do You play key C in trough B in front of body B. All right. Okay, what's next? Unwrap package E containing black keys F. All righty. Black keys F. Hmm? Place black keys F between white keys C. There we are. Oh, don't they look pretty? Black and white. <laughs> yes, ladies, you'll say such a chick two-tone effect. Wait a minute. <laughs> Never mind. Let's move right along now. How do I know if the black keys are in the right place? It says here you'll find out when you start to play. <laughs> What's the next move? Unwind roll of piano wire G and string inside body B, starting at treble and proceeding the bass. All right. Mm-hmm. 
wire out here. They're all strung up here. There we go. Yeah. Now you tighten piano wire G. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. What does it say I should do when the wire busts? When wire G busts, tie a knot in it and proceed as previously instructed. <laughs> oh, get all, it's all tied up there. There we go. All right, Pop H and fasten the body B. Okay. Let's race Pop H, fasten stick I to tie the body B. Okay, stick I is in place. Let's race Pop H and rest it on stick I. All right. Ow! <laughs> Caution. Be sure Pop H does not slip off stick eye while hand J is underneath. Gee, that hurt. Yeah. Well, that's it, I guess. No, 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 Stan. There's one more step. Assemble piano bench K. Okay, just a second. Okay. And place in front of assemble pots A, B, C, D, E, G, E, F, H, and I. Now, your free bird grand piano is ready to be played by hand J. <laughs> okay. There we go. What was our assembling time, please? Oh, that's too bad. Our producer dropped his hourglass. <laughs> oh, come on, play it, Dan. All right. Yes, friends, don't say you can't afford a grand piano until you've tried a Freebird Build It Yourself grand piano, which only sells for $29.95. Uh, tonight, only this special studio demonstrator model, only nine ninety eight. As is, if you call the station right now. Uh, say, you didn't tell them about the other models. Sam. Oh, yes, so I didn't. We have three models, the baby grand, the adult grand, and the teenager grand, which comes with ducktail keys, motorcycle boots on the legs, and an eagle on the lid. <laughs> call now, as our supply is limited. Gee, Stan, you know, I'm very sorry about what happened. Why is that, Peggy? Well, I'd have wanted to sing, but I can't very well with the piano all, all over, over the, the floor. floor. No, that's true. Well, would you do me a favor? Oh, certainly. Well, will you put it back together? Oh, surely. Isn't it? Yeah. That's quite all right. That was nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Peggy Taylor singing Send for Me. When you want a true lover, send for me. Send for me. You'll never want any other. Send for me. Send for me. I promise you, I'll be true. Send for me, send for me. Anytime, just tell me your problems and you'll find out, baby. I'll solve them if you're late one morning. Don't hurry if you got big trouble. Don't worry, just depend on your friend. Send for me. Send for me Morning, noon, and night In the early bright Don't you fret, my pretty pet I'm gonna treat you right Don't you dare Raise a hair I'm gonna share Every care Anywhere Oh, yeah Send for me I'll be there
from time to time on this program, we should like to present literary giants of our time. The next voice you will hear will be that of Stan Freeberg, coming to you from the office of Albert T. Wong. Good evening, Mr. Wong. Good evening, Stan. Oh, well, Mr. Wong, how does it feel to be our first literary giant? Well, Stan, I'm not exactly a giant. I mean, I'm only five foot two. Uh, no, no. See, giant is just an expression. I mean, you're a big man in the field of literature. Oh, yes. I didn't uh, mean that. Uh, oh, yes. You were uh, literally oh, uh, actually a giant. Yes. Just, uh, just oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Paraphrasing, as it were. Uh, let's get down to cases here and let the folks in on uh, what sort of thing. You understand, all right? Oh, yes. Good. Oh, yes. Uh, let the folks in on what sort of things uh, you write. Well, Stan... I write the sayings on the little slips of paper you find inside Chinese fortune cookies. And allow me to add that they have been some of the most memorable fortune cookies I've ever read. Just wonderful. Would you rattle off a few of the old favorites there, Albert? May I call you Albert? Oh, I should be most offended if you did not. Well, you folks may remember this one. I wrote it back in 1938, and the whole country went around saying... Pleasant prospects for the future are indicated. <laughs> Wonderful. And then, thank you. And then I wrote, Do not act upon the impulse of the moment. Oh, I remember that so well. And I'm sure, I'm sure you will all remember this fortune cookie message. It was the first one I ever had published and printed inside a cookie. A letter of great importance may reach you any day now. Oh, oh God. Wonderful memory. I remember breaking open a cookie and reading that several years ago, Albert. And did a letter of great importance reach you? Yes, I was drafted. <laughs> I suppose there are other fortune cookie writers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But in all modesty, I would like to quote a critic who writes for the Fu Young Tribune. He said, Wong is the Oscar Hammerstein III of fortune cookies. <laughs> People all over America walk out of Chinese restaurants humming his messages. They do indeed. Have you a few words of encouragement, uh, perhaps for young aspiring fortune cookie writers who may be listening tonight? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Each oh, year... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Each year, countless young hopefuls break their hearts trying to crack the inner golden circle of message writers. You've heard the saying, there's a broken heart for every fortune cookie writer on Maja Long Street. <laughs> no, I don't believe I've heard that one. I wrote it. <laughs> and your word of encouragement is? Keep writing. If you have to start out writing fortunes for weight machines, do it. <laughs> I got my start writing. You weigh 198 pounds and will travel. <laughs> As I like to say, oy vey. <laughs> so, my advice, stay with it. Don't be discouraged. Every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> say, Stan, that would make a good make message. Make a good message, yeah. I just made that up out of my head, you know. <laughs> Real Edgar Guest. Let me just jot that down here. Okay, you want to use my back as a desk there? Thank you. All right. While you're jotting it down there, Albert, I'll just stroll out into your factory here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wong, you coming with me? Oh, yes. Uh, could you explain how the message is put inside the cookie? The oh, cookie? certainly, Stan. After I write the message and it is printed, these girls here lay it on the unfinished cookie, which at this point is flat, like a little pancake. And then almost instantly, the machine folds the cookie and bends it around the message. Wonderful. I noticed you use girls with long, thin fingers. Oh, yes. Reason. They have to snatch their hand out of the way, fast. <laughs> Good reason. Well, what if they don't? We have to call in a locksmith to get the cookie off their finger. <laughs> we never lost the cookie yet. How about fingers? Well, quite a few quite of those. Quite a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just one of the hazards of the sport, I guess. Well, before we sign off, there's something I've been uh, dying to ask you, Mr. Yes. Wong. <laughs> oh, yes. You know the, uh, the joke that's been making the rounds? Oh, yes. About... You are referring to the joke where somebody supposedly opens a fortune cookie and found the message, help me, I am being held captive in a Chinese fortune cookie factory. That's the one, yes. Well, to tell the truth, Stan, I am just a little bit sick of that one. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, people pull it on me. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. You're a wealthy man. Yeah. 
Well, it's only a joke. Yes, a poor joke. A poor joke at that. Uh huh. Yes, sir. What is that sort of a pounding noise there? Oh, it's nothing. It's just someone working on the buildings. Then I don't know. It's a workman or something. Uh-huh. Uh huh. L- let's get back to my office, Stan. Uh-huh. Please. All right. Well, and thanks so much for being with us, Mr. Albert T. Wong. gentlemen, you've heard our vocal group, the Judd Conlon Rhythm Airs, singing behind Peggy and behind me on many of my Capitol records, and tonight we think it'd be nice if they sang out front. All right. Well, let's see, there's, uh, let's see, six of them all together, and by name they are... Judd Conlon, Clark Yoakum, Chuck Schroeder, Mac McLean, Billy Jean Norman, and Gloria Wood, Florence Nightingale, Enrico Caruso! Hold it. Lanny Ross. <laughs> All right, you guys. Everybody after Gloria Wood didn't count, folks. Here's the Judd Collin Rhythm Airs singing just one of those things. Just one of those things. Just one of those crazy things. One of those bells that now and then rings. Just one of those things. It was just one of those nights. Just one of those fabulous nights. A trip to the moon on gossamer wings. Just one of those things. If we thought a bit of the end of it when we started painting the town, we'd have been aware that our love affair was too hot. Not to cool down So goodbye, dear and amen Here's hoping we meet now and then It was great fun, but it was just one of those things Just one of those nights Just one of those fabulous flights A trip to the moon, a gush of the wings Just one of those things thought of it, of the end of it, when we started painting the town, we'd have been aware that our love affair was too hot, not to cool down, so goodbye here, and amen, here's hoping we meet now and then, great fun, but it was just fun. Been swell. Well. What a song. So long. Lots of fun. We're done. Just one of those Now for the third lecture by Dr. Herman Horn on the subject of hi-fi, which as you know is the reproduction of music and sound in high fidelity with a full range of frequencies. They know that, you a lunkhead. <laughs> yes. The last time we presented the sound of Benny Goodman playing Danny Boy 20 feet underwater in a kelp bed, a life-size latex rubber Liberace being inflated, <laughs> and many other fascinating things. The wonderful sound, too. It was a wonderful the close sound. of the lecture was unfortunate. The good professor's assistant, Strudelmeyer, scratched the needle right across the hi-fi record. Unforgivable. Of course, under the hi-fi oath, he was supposed to be boiled in turntable lubricating oil at once. But I'm a good-natured fellow, so I told him I would wait until after tonight's lecture... Now, the first yeah, thing... Pardon me, Doctor. Who are you? I'm your announcer. Don't be ashamed of it. I once played tuba for Horace Height. <laughs> well, I've been kicking around the idea of a little custom installation myself. There, there's no such thing as a little custom installation. Well, now, I only your head that I... I Quiet. I, 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 Quiet. I, I, Here's the equipment you must have. Must, must, must. Four 2,000-watt amplifiers and ten separate preamps. A 21-jewel turntable, a diamond stylus, a pearl mester, <laughs> and a cotton pickering arm. 
But what about the speaker? The whole house becomes a speaker. You move into the garage. <laughs> I think we'd better forget it. I, I, the I, I, entire I, house become very giant speaker. Now it's settled. <laughs> it's settled. Oh, no, it, it, it's, it's, it's not so. Besides, my wife, my wife doesn't like loud music. Yeah, loud. Yes. I would expect that from a wife. We've got a special demonstration from people like your wife to prove that hi-fi can be soft. <clears throat> soft and misty. As the teardrops in a mother's eyes, as toward the chair, her wayward son is slowly led. <laughs> Nick Kenny, Mirror Syndicate, 1945. <laughs> the old ones are the best. <laughs> okay, Strudelmeyer, roll in the crate, gently. Gently now. There we are. Oh, 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 pardon me, uh, pardon me. Is that fur on those wheels? Naturally, there's nothing softer than a mink wheel. <laughs> no, if I'd like to hear about it. Mm. All right, unpack, Strudelmeyer. Inside the crate, in a nest of flogged peach fuzz and eider up. <laughs> That's twice as soft as eider down. <laughs> Rests a 2,000-year-old Ming Dynasty porcelain temple bell. <laughs> Traditionally, it is struck with the soft, fuzzy cotton tail of a Ming rabbit. Only hi-fi could bring you the delicate highs of the sound. Okay, Sprood. Let's hear it. No! <laughs> Me head. I said, just with the tail, not with the whole lousy rabbit. <laughs> Shape up, Strudelmeyer. You could be replaced by Quasimoto. <laughs> remind me, before we come to the end of my lecture, I'll show you the difference between highs and lows. <clears throat> you have just heard the high vibrations when our friend here smashed the temple bell for which he will be fed to the octopi at Marineland right after the show. <laughs> now for the low vibrations. Listen as Clumsy here plays a mating call on the Canadian moose horn. Go, Scrooge. <laughs> Um, he has good jazz ideas. <laughs> yes, but his lip isn't too good. <laughs> he sat in with Chet Baker the other night, and I, I think that, uh, what is that? Strudelmeyer, is that your moose? Well, get him out of here and stop blushing. <laughs> Why don't we just forget about me buying a high five? Be quiet. Be quiet. As you and your wife sit of an evening... Shivering in the garage, listening to your house. <laughs> these, are, these are the wonderful types of sounds you can play on your hi-fi. The sound, for example, of James Cagney removing his makeup. <laughs> If we had time, he could remove the other 999 faces. But what about music? Can I listen to music on my system? What for? It's only good for checking to see if you have wow and flutter. Or if you can still hear the turntable rumble. Oh, I That's see. That's all it's for and nothing oh, else. Yes, I understand. Perfect. Only purpose. Mm -hmm. However, if you persist, let me show you how loud music can be on a real hi-fi system. Well, that won't be necessary. Yes, it will. Well, first, I play an average record played through a cheap... $5,000 home hi-fi system. See if you don't see how thin the orchestra sounds. <laughs> Terrible. Now the very same record played through my own stereophantic orthopedic cinema guanarama phonic sound system. Okay, Strudelmeyer. Oh, doctor, I really don't think the building can withstand the vibration. Stand back. Ready, back. <laughs> Now, 
Now, if you want chicken, turn up your volume knobs all the way! Tonight only, this special demonstrator studio, only nine ninety eight. <laughs> well, that concludes a series of three lectures on hi-fi by Dr. Herman Horn. It also concludes Dr. Horn, who say nothing of Strudelmeyer. However, we shall carry on alone. Look to us in the future to bring you such goodies as the collapse of the Los Angeles Shrine Auditorium in hi-fi. <laughs> that would be a good one. A child's garden of voodoo. <laughs> A stereophonic binaural recording of the fun-filled Charge of the Light Brigade with the original cast. <laughs> As you may remember, we promised to bring you my recording of Shaboom tonight, but the uh, mail has been rather heavy begging us to please not do rock and roll, and their point is well taken. I mean, they want a lot of gibberish, you know. So if you want to hear Shaboom, write us, and we'll try to do it. But tonight we're doing something a little more along the ballad lines. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorites, and I hope it'll be a favorite of yours, Elvis Presley's Heartbreak Hotel. <laughs> well, since my baby left me, well, I found a new place to dwell. Well, it's down at the end of lonely street, and it's heartbreak hotel. <laughs> Good afternoon, more echo on my voice. Although it's always crowded, it's still in spite of you. We both been out in our days to cry. Oh, I hurt my jeans. Third pair of things. No, no, that's enough. The pains are coming back. I do more, I do more, but I'm afraid I'll be arrested. And before we sign off, are there any questions you folks in the audience uh, have about Elvis? Yes, all right, that gentleman right there. Uh, how come I can never understand what he's saying? Good question. Because on his particular RCA Victor Records, the dog has got his head caught in the speaker. Now, this lady uh, right here in the yellow dress. Uh, yes, well, well how come? Elvis always wiggles around like that when he sings. Because as a boy, he had a loose bicycle seat. <laughs> and time for one more question. When is this program over? <laughs> right now. Until next week, this is Stan Freeberg saying thanks for listening, God bless you, and good night. Show is produced in Hollywood by Pete Barnum and is written by Stan Freeberg, Pete Barnum, and Jack Lewis. Featuring the music of Billy May, Judd Conlon for the Bears, and the songs of Peggy Taylor, Dawes Butler, Peter Leeds, and June Foray. Bud Sewell speaking.